It's only two days after a funeral. <laughs> yeah. The first part wasn't so bad now, was it? That's what you guys get. Oh. Do you guys think, uh, do you think when, like, do you think pimps actually have resumes? Do you think they ever, like, write up their resume? Um, and if they do, do you think it ever says things like, I was a thought leader in my industry? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that came up with, I just came up with that this morning and my girlfriend hated it. I just wanted to confirm it sucks. So. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wrap up before I bring the other comedians up. I have, a. Um, I'm older, as you can tell, so I uh, have sometimes I have trouble with technology. I don't want to, I don't want to perpetuate any stereotypes, but but in particular the autocorrect on my phone. Is, is anyone else? Is it, it's not just me. Is it? You guys all have weird autocorrect things? Yeah. Like for me, the worst one was this summer. I had an intern I worked with on my day job. Worked with her real closely all summer. Lovely young lady from one of the local colleges. Um, but on her last day, I had to I had to be in meetings off site, so I didn't get to say goodbye to her. I figured I'd just send her a quick text me text message. Um, seems seems like a sensible thing to do, right? But what I meant to type was it was great working with you. Good luck back in college this uh, this semester. Uh, my stupid phone auto corrected it to a picture of my penis. So <laughs> anyway, that's my time. I'm Chris Ray, guys. Are you guys ready for your first uh, first other comedian coming up here? Yeah. yeah. This guy, um, he's, he's relatively new. He's been coming to the open mics here for a few months and really has worked hard. And he's really funny and he's helped out with the club. Um, he's just a great guy. Um, and I think you're really going to like him. So welcome to your stage. Uh, you might have seen him when you checked in. Mr. John Freitag. <laughs> Since I'm standing up here in light, I'm just going to get this out of the way real quick. Yes, this is a hickey. No, I didn't ask for it. And yes, comedians do get laid. Uh, I'm going to start with a story for you guys, because I want you to trust me as much as I want to trust you guys. Let me set the scene for you. I'm 18 years old, just starting to get too horny for my own good, but I'm still a virgin. On this day, I'm sitting in the basement with my friends playing some video games. When I get a call or a text from a girl, come over, I'm watching. All right, finally gonna do it. So I get up to get ready, and then I jokingly tell my sister to go make me a sandwich because it's 2012, I'm still a little bit sexist, and I need fuel for what's about to come. To my surprise, she does. Uh, so I scarf it down, I thank her, and I'm on my way. That was my first mistake. On my way there, my friend who's still at the house texts me, where are you? I tell him, on my way to lose my V card, wish me luck. Then I put my phone down and head on inside. That was my second mistake. So we head up to the girls' attic bedroom. Clothes come off, protection goes on, and I'm finally doing it. After a few awkward minutes of thrusting and hitting my head against the sloped attic ceiling, I start to feel a little rumble in my tummy. Stomach. Ugh. Don't worry, just nerves. So I brushed off. But that feeling doesn't go away. It just starts to build. So I get the bright idea. I'll just let it apart. <laughs> no big deal. So I do. And then we continue. And as we're going, I start to feel a warm trickle run down the back of my leg. <laughs> and in my virgin brain, I'm just thinking, I am that good. She is just that wet. But then I start to notice a smell. So I take a look behind me, and I notice a cool design on the blanket. I didn't know you liked Jackson Pollock. And I've never seen it on sheets before. My sheets are solid white. And that's when the fog of horniness starts to clear. I didn't just fart. She wasn't just that wet. Oh, fuck. Somehow, by this point, she doesn't realize what's happened and gets up to go use the restroom, and I take this opportunity to grab my clothes and get the fuck out of there, like an asshole. Then when I get to my car, I look at my phone, and the same friend that texts me, hey, hey, no, uh, seriously, 
You should get back home when your sister was making that sandwich. I saw her crushing up laxatives and then sprinkling it in the middle of it while muttering something like, this will show that fucker. And like, to me, that's a pretty good prank without her knowing what was going on. But I kind of wish she had known what was going on, because that would have been the perfect prank. Did anybody else have like a weird high school sex story that spread like wildfire? It got told and retold like folklore, and a friend of a friend of a friend that always had a video of it, but nobody ever saw it. Ours involved a girl, her dog, and some peanut butter. I go into details, but I don't think I have to. Um, and while everybody else was asking, like, what will this do for her college prospects? Or, like, what will her boyfriend think? I was over here asking the real questions, like, what kind of peanut butter was it? Was it creamy or chunky? Was it Peter Pan peanut butter? They just had their salmonella outbreak. I'm young. I don't know if that's sexually transmitted. These are the thoughts that haunt me. Another haunting thought to me is having kids. Uh, and I'm right at that age where everybody's like, oh, don't you want a family? Don't you want kids? And to them I say, no. Uh, what about this screams good dad? I'm out late at comedy clubs frequently. I spend money on trips I can't afford. And just last week I was trying to haggle with my uh, Molly dealer to try to get a better deal. But sure, let's let this monster raise a baby. That's why I'm pro-choice. Can't have kids around my phone. Um, with technology, I don't have to haggle with my dealer anymore. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has used Venmo. It's great. I can just send him $30 and then an emoji associated with what I want to buy. I'll send him broccoli for pie. Or mushrooms for mushrooms. And for acid, I'll send him a fish. I don't know why. Don't ask questions. Um, but then I remember some asshole at Venmo set it up like a social media site, and all your transactions pop up on your friends' pages, like statuses. So now I'm up at 3 a.m. making a fish stir fry so my boss doesn't get suspicious of the four day weekend I requested ahead of me. It fucking sucks. Has anybody here watched The Great British Bake Off? Yeah. It's my favorite show. All the contestants are so nice and polite. They're always helping each other out. I want to be the first American contestant on there. I think I can bring a certain edge that can get those ratings up. Like if a contestant's struggling, the others will go over there and help them. But for me, I'd be over there trying to blow on the cage, hitting it to fall over, going, you're shit, you suck, you're shit. Or like when they win, they're super humble and polite, like, oh no, oh gosh, not me, everyone's so good. Not me. Not my competitive spirit. Woo! That's how you decorate a cake! Is that fond that? You're trash, Charles, trash! <laughs> and don't even get me started if I win Star Baker. What's that? The American one? Is it 1776 again? Do you even know how to make baklava? Your phyllo wasn't even laminated, Victoria. Get your head in the game. See these teeth? These are the straight teeth of a winner. USA! USA! <laughs> and finally, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to leave you guys with this. It's a deep philosophical question I ponder all the time. Why can our bubbles taste spicy but not sweet? Let me explain. Uh, why do I have to feel the burn of a pepper twice when all I really want is the sweet kiss from a Twinkie? You guys have been great. My name is John. You guys have a good night. All right, give it up to John one more time.